we are missing some very important knowledge about the event loop of Node.js because I feel like this is not really covered in many videos and blog articles, but Node.js event loop actually consists of many steps that are going through that are happening within every millisecond when you are running a Node.js app. So let's talk about this and what are the implications and what you need to be aware of. So first of all, Node.js does have an event loop, okay? If you go to the official Node.js website, you will see that there's a big article on how the event loop works actually, and the, all the steps that we're gonna talk about now. So let's go back to the blackboard. And this round figure that you see here that goes clockwise is basically an event loop that starts as soon as you run a node script, okay? You run node index.js, your app starts, and as soon as your app starts or the process starts, the loop starts as well. Now, the thing is, if you only have a very few lines of code within your index.js file, let's say you're just doing a console log or something like that, the app is gonna start, the event loop is gonna start as well, and then it's gonna close. It's gonna exit because your process stopped. There's nothing that we need to listen to. On the other hand, if you're starting a web server, as you know, when you start the web server, you do this thing, server.listen, and under the hood, it basically waits for TCP connections and the event loop does not stop. It just keeps going. And it's basically going through these all steps, waiting for some events to happen. And this is the crucial part of understanding how the event loop works, okay? So let's call this one the event loop, E L, just so that we know what we're referring to. So as soon as the event loop starts, we are going to go all of these over all of these steps like many times within one second, okay? So what is happening in the very first step called timers? Well, it turns out that Node.js is checking for timers that are available, okay? So if you have done a, a, a timeout, set set timeout or set interval, they are going to be handled within this uh, part here in, in set timeouts or in the timer section, okay? Let's look at this piece of code and understand what has precedence when we are in this step, timers, okay? So we're gonna see that we have a console log, or first of all, we have three timeouts. We have a console log set timeout one, then we have a resolve and reject, and then we have some function called queue microtask, and then we have next tick. What are these? Because if you go for a normal Node.js tutorial video, you're not gonna know anything about this. This is like very low level Node.js stuff. But let me explain. I think if you are using Node.js as your tool to accomplish your business needs, the better you know the underlying technologies of your tool or how it works under the hood, the better equipped you are, okay? So it turns out, let me switch to another page. Uh, Node.js or basically the engine, V8 engine that Node.js is based upon, it's it's, uh, it applies the same for the browsers. Um, they have macro tasks and macro tasks, meaning macro tasks are more important. So they have a higher priority than micro ma macro tasks. Micro tasks include promise callbacks, mutation observer API, uh, process dot next tick, which is a method that we can fire manually within Node.js, queue micro task function that we basically saw and await expressions. On the other hand, micro tasks or macro tasks consist of set timeouts, set intervals, DOM manipulation, IO operations, for example, reading a file, network requests, and event handlers. Now, what does it mean for us? So in this timeout, we're gonna, the present is gonna be like the following. So we enter the timeout, okay? We're gonna log the first thingy because console log is actually synchronous. So we're gonna stumble upon this and it's gonna be logged out. Next, what, what's gonna happen? Are we going to log out the promises or are we going to log out the queue micro task or the next tick? This is a very interesting question. And the answer is actually here. So we have these three bubbles here, which are also kind of a loop within the loop, all right? And all of these three bubbles actually are living within every step that we have here. So they're inside the timers, they're also inside the pending callbacks, 
they're also inside the poll. So they are running under every step and they also have a precedence. Okay, I know this is confusing, but first of all, we have these steps and then we have a precedence within each queue. So the next tick queue is the one that we are firing manually. Okay, here, for example, we do next tick and then we do a console log. So that's gonna fire first, meaning within our set timeout, we're going to get next tick one first. The next thing that's going to happen is we're going to look for micro tasks. Micro tasks are the ones that we already discussed, for example, promises. So promises are going to have a higher precedence. And then we're going to fire the queue micro task, which also basically related to a micro task. And then we're going to look for the macro tasks. Okay, in this case, we don't have any micro tasks in this piece of code, but you can imagine that it will fire next. As soon as these all three are done within our first timeout. And remember that we're still in this section here. We're going to jump to the second timeout. So basically, event loop starts, we go to the timers section, and the timers also have its own precedence. So it's going to make sure that everything has run here, has run here, and then has run here. And then we jump to the next, or basically, function within the timers. And as soon as these are done, now the event loop can proceed to pending callbacks. What is pending callbacks? Basically, every time we're going to come to this, the poll section is pretty much the most important one. It's the one that executes most of the stuff, including the synchronous stuff. Okay. Sometimes poll does not, poll stage does not execute things and it defers them. It defers them to the next round trip of the event loop. And sometimes, basically from the previous round, things end up here pending callbacks, for example, a timeout can end up there for one or other reason. So, so as you know, pending callbacks are going to, <clears throat> as I mentioned, also have this precedence of three different types of queues, and it's going to execute them one by one, as soon as the pending callbacks have been executed, we're going to jump to the next section called idle and prepare. There's nothing to cover there because it is it's native to v8 or node.js. And it's basically doing some bookkeeping under the hood to make sure that we're intact. So there's no impact for us when it comes to the optimizations that we can make. Okay, so the next point will be poll. As I said, this is the most important one. Why? Because this is where the incoming connections, for example, uh, HTTP or TCP connections that are being established, socket connections, and so on, file reading, all the synchronous stuff is going to happen here. And this is exactly where we need to make sure that our, basically, our app is performant. Worry not, I'm going to release another video as soon as possible, probably most uh, after this one, in order to learn how to actually make your Node.js app performant. Do you new, do you need new worker threads? Do you need to, how do you make everything asynchronous? And most of all, how basically how not to block the event loop. And there's a thing called uh, event loop lag. Basically, when your operations are executed with a small lag, it's really hard to control that. And I'm going to cover that in the next video as well. So stay tuned and subscribe if you haven't yet. Now we covered the polling. Okay, so we're going to execute most of the tasks here. And then we also have it thing called check. Okay, what is a check? Well, we're basically checking for one and only thing, a thing called set immediate. Yeah, you might not heard heard about that. We have set inter, uh, set timeout set interval. And we also have a set intermediate here. It works the same way as a set timeout or set interval. But the difference is that it has a presence because it's happening within the event loop. So basically, if you have a set intermediate immediate in your code, it's going to be executed right here. On the other hand, set timeout can either be executed in the timers, depending on what you, what your operating system des, uh, decides during the poll event, or it can be deferred to the next round. Okay, so set immediate basically has a higher precedence than other timers. And then we also have the last step called close callbacks. Basically, these are going to listen for 
close events, for example, when you're closing the socket connection or when you are manually closing the callbacks or uh, removing the callbacks. This is it, what I wanted to tell you guys in this video. This, is was, this was just a rough overview of the internals of the event loop of Node.js. And as I said, all the optimizations, optimization topics are going to be covered in the next video. So smash like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.